Hello wrestling fans and welcome to another episode of Russo Plays TEW. I am Nicholas Rondreas and this is episode 2. We're going to be doing the results and just going over a little bit of why things were graded the way they were. Uh, Vince is not here this week. He's actually doing a show out in England. So, good luck to you, Vince, on that, and good luck to you on this show. Let's see how it goes. Getting right into it here. We're going to see immediately, we um, we have this Vince Russo opening segment, and one thing that I did off camera is I condensed all the smaller angles into one 16-minute opening segment rated off of Vince Russo. The reason I did that is while having the different bullet points are good when you're telling the story, it's better this way, I think, for you guys and for the game itself. So we have the opening segment with Russo, Turner, Sullivan, everything that's happening, but mainly rated off of Russo. You'll see it gets a 49, and this is... Mainly due to the fact that in the game, Russo's entertainment skills are average. So if we move on to our next segment, we get Shivani and Madden breaking down the segment. And we get a 35. Um, a lot of the reason being Mark Madden being penalized for a poor gimmick. I do not think we changed him... I'd have to check to see what gimmick he's currently running. So let me write that in my notebook. This is a new thing. We didn't show this to you in episode one. Uh, during your booking, a built-in notepad is in the game that you can pull up uh, in your pre-booking, post-booking, during the show to take notes on Something like this, for example. Mark Madden, Mark Madden was penalized for a poor gimmick. So let's check that out later. Moving on. We get a, a much better segment here. We get Flair and Sting. Um, Sting telling Flair about what happened with Russo. This gets a 78. Crowd is now, boom, into it. They're seeing you know, people they want to see. They're popular people. So... We got, we got the crowd back into it now. Russo cutting his promo on Ferrara, telling him that he's a stooge. He works for him. You'll notice it's 10 points lower than the last Russo promo. This isn't because the crowd's tiring of Russo or anything like that. It is actually due to the lack of popularity of Ed Ferrara. And that brought it down a full 10 points. They would rather Russo talk about the overarching themes than talk about someone they don't know. And we have the backstage confrontation. And look at what a difference that makes. That's almost a 25-point difference from Ed Ferrara to Ric Flair for that grade, when it's basically the same people. So that just shows you popularity... It's not the end-all, be-all, but it certainly matters. The fans in Total Extreme Wrestling want to see stars. They want to see people they're used to, especially in a company like WCW where uh, popularity matters. Moving on, we have our first match. And I'm going to actually open up what's called the dirt sheet for this match as well. And the dirt sheet shows us a lot of the factors that went into it. So you'll see here there's quite a bit. As far as the positives, uh, we had a good road agent. It was well booked. They went all out. They had are both stars. They have great star quality and great charisma. Uh, Nash and Hall held back slightly. And what that essentially is, is that's 
to separate TV matches from pay-per-view matches. Workers aren't going to give it their all on TV in Total Extreme Wrestling. Um, they're going to save it for the pay-per-view. So a Nash and Hall match on the TV show that you run is going to be different from the Nash and Hall match that you run at a pay-per-view, which is going to be different from the Nash and Hall match that you run at your biggest pay-per-view, say, Starcade. So the m- motivation for the workers to work hard depends on the level of the show that you're running. Um, Nash has a poor gimmick. He did not deal well with trying to go all out, unfortunately. And you could see Hall is actually penalized for some of the habits that the game has him down as having. So those habits are enough so that they're slowing him down in the ring. Still a 69, though. Still a good rating. Then we have another backstage segment uh, where Ed Ferrara goes up and tells Eddie Guerrero about the match that he's having later. We're going to get a pop-up right now. This is telling us that we that the angle expects us to do a pre-booking of a match. However, this match is going to be on this show, so we're not going to do that. So we are going to skip it. Our next angle is Russo trying to get in David Flair's head, and something you may notice. David Flair and Daphne are a very poor combination. They do not click at all. Total Extreme Wrestling has its random points and the key part of that is chemistry chemistry between a manager and their client chemistry between an announcer and another commentator chemistry between two workers fighting each other and chemistry between two workers tag teaming together all of these things are randomized in the game so that you have a different experience each time and so that you can have those special special teams of two people who you never thought would of teaming together but they suddenly have great chemistry and you have to move forward with them or on the other side of the coin that big feud that you've been dying to do that all of a sudden has negative chemistry the workers don't work well together and you got to scramble last moment to try and redo your booking uh this one doesn't really hurt us too bad so we'll take a note in our notepad Daphne should not be managing David Flair we're gonna save it and we're gonna move on we have the outsiders backstage to another decent angle and You'll notice I'm, I'm calling D's decent, 61's decent. You can't think of the rating system as a American education grading system. You're not a failure if you get below a 60. In fact, you're going to get grades below a 60. We've seen grades well below 60's already. The way that I tend to think of it, and of course if, if I am wrong, feel free to correct me, Generally, if it's 90 and above, these are your special, memorable, would make it onto a DVD moments. You got your 80s to 90s, which are just good things that people would be buzzing about the next day. Your 70 to 80s, which are good, but not great. Your 60s, which are average, but not good. And then it sort of goes down as you go down all the way to zero, which is... The worst thing that ever happened in wrestling, essentially. I I'm, don't think I've ever gotten a zero as a rating. And I've run some pretty bad companies in Total Extreme Wrestling. Um, but yeah, the, a 61's average. It's maintaining. For a national company, the rating that you want to get by the end of the show is probably in the 80s. You probably always want to leave the crowd buzzing. But remember, we're still in the middle of the show. We don't have to. We can build up as we get there. So we have another match. It is Eddie versus Benoit. Eddie wins using some cheeky shenanigans. 
And just going into the reasoning here, one of the things that brought it down, and I wanted to point this out, is the fact that it was a face versus a face. And the reason I wanted to point this out is that even though the penalty exists, we still got a 70. It was still a really good match. So it's not a death sentence, booking face versus face. It's just that the crowd's going to be a little bit split on who they're rooting for, and it'll take away from the experiences, at least per the game. Moving on, we have Jarrett and Steiner, uh, the segment between the two of them. Rate's good. We're building up. We're building into that things are getting better um, type atmosphere. And then we get back down into the decent but not good area. Um, Flair and Flair backstage sort of taunting each other. Well, more David Flair taunting Rick. A lot of that may have been due to the fact that Daphne was there. So that might have pulled it down, but I wouldn't base a lot of that on Daphne. What happened here is David Flair came up to us, the booker, to tell us that he thinks he'd be better off without Daphne as his manager. And we get Steiner versus Jarrett. Um, got a 69. Same, A lot of the same stuff that we had before. Inconsistency is something that can hit you really hard and at the wrong times. And this also got dinged for having the... At this time, it was a heel versus a heel. Goldberg arrives, and people are happy to see him. He gets a 74. We're, just, we're moving forward. We're doing good. And we got Vince Russo telling Sting that he'll be fighting Goldberg. And the crowd is interested. They want to know where this is going. We're getting a 75 now. We're starting to get into the higher grades as we move along in the show, which is, I think, what you want to do. So again, they want the pre-booking, but this is going to be happening on this show, so we're just going to move forward and ignore it. We have Flair versus Flair, and this gets us a decidedly average score. Let us see why. Well, David Flair is getting penalized for a negative crowd reaction. Negative, not in that he's a heel and they are booing him, but in that they don't care and they want him to go away. Um, he also has poor psychology, so he doesn't know necessarily what spot to go to when and how to tell a story in the ring. And the managerial chemistry with Daphne is very low. So all told, this could have been actually in the 60s were it not for Daphne. Flair throws a temper tantrum. That brings the crowd back into it. They've probably already forgiven that match now based on this 73. And Flair goes backstage and he attacks Vince Russo. And due to Russo's popularity, it gets pulled down a little bit down into the 56s. And after this show, we could actually check uh, what popularity Vince Russo is per this mod. Uh, Luger pulls Flair off. Uh, Luger did not improvise well. Ric Flair did. And on the flip side of the chemistry, Lex Luger and his manager, Miss Elizabeth, have great chemistry they work amazing together so Goldberg comes out he wants to finish the job Flair started Vince Russo doesn't respond and this gets a 64 so this is a this is average but this isn't Sting comes out uh, road agents come spilling out and Sting backstabs Goldberg takes him down from behind and that gets an A that's the highest grade we've seen so far uh, the crowd is is really digging this that is something that they'll remember and Goldberg has a, a fit backstage essentially he's throwing everything he's just completely unhappy and we have our recap and our 
review of everything that happened. That gets a 69. That's just kind of showing us everything that happens. Nothing to write home about. But still, a 69 for a recap isn't bad. And then Sting is backstage. He gets interviewed by Scott Hudson. It's a sit-down interview, if I'm remembering correctly. I think it's a good grade. He gets a 72. And here we go. The main event of the evening. And that is far and away the best match that we've seen so far. Uh, and you can just tell right away. I'm not even in the dirt sheet yet. Just the road agent notes. The announcing wasn't good enough on this. The color commentary wasn't good enough. And there wasn't enough selling shown. But it still got a 76 and was still the best match on the card. Uh, Hulk Hogan got penalized for motivation because he was losing. He didn't try as hard. Uh, he got penalized for having declining physical ability. And Bret Hart really didn't get penalized too much. Now, they both got their bonuses for star quality and for charisma, and Hart has a really good momentum. And Hart actually beats Hogan clean with a sharpshooter. And then the injury angle, he collapses after, and that, look at that grade. That's how you want to end a show, an 86. And our show gets a 79 overall. It is a really good show. It increases our popularity in 14 regions. So we are already coming after WWF. So we are going to move on to our next day. And I think the first thing that I would want to do is check on the competition. Um, they were in the, they were in New Jersey. Oh, they got an 85. They had a main event of The Rock defeating Billy Gunn. They had a, a no contest Chris Jericho and Rikishi. But the big things were their angles. Some brawls between Austin, Triple H, Rock, Undertaker. It brought out all the big guns here. So, as you can see, after this, Ric Flair has big morale issues for having to lose to David Flair. And that's something that I'm going to let Vince handle when he gets to it. The second thing that I wanted to point out is that the notes that we made are still here. So these are things that we can check. We're going to check Mark Madden's gimmick and see why it's so bad. He's running a split personality gimmick. Uh, and he is rated a 45. So that is that is very poor and can definitely use a better gimmick than what he's running right there. We have a couple emails. Rhonda Singh is not happy that we have yet to assign her a push. Scott Steiner is feeling the effects of a grueling recent schedule and asks that you take that into account when booking him. He needs time to recover. Uh, TNT sent us a rating warning, so we may have to move Nitro off of TNT. We, I will let Vince deal with that, definitely. And we got a 5.88, which the ratings in this game aren't based on Nielsen ratings. But... To give you an idea, that is about half of what Raw did. So, that is likely why TNT is unhappy. But a lot of that has to do with um, where WCW was at the time, not necessarily the strength of the show. How many people tune in has to do a lot with the popularity of the company, not necessarily the sh how good that particular show is. If you have good shows consecutively, more people tune in. But because we're just starting, we don't have that luxury. So that is actually where I am going to call it today. I thank you guys for tuning in. As always, you should check out Pyro and Ballyhoo and try to get into the brand, which is the basically the behind the curtain where you could see these episodes 
You can see um, all the different things that Vince is putting up there, the interviews, the um, blog posts that he puts up, everything like that. If you want to hear more of me, I am at youtube.com slash let's play T-E-W. And again, thank you for watching and have a good one.